So this is my lightning talk. It's about uh, implementing LDAP authorization in Kubernetes. Uh, well, LDAP is actually the least important part of this actual talk. It's more about webhooks and stuff. So, well, I'm Jordi Rauter. I work at Cousteau. Maybe some of you actually were at our Software Circus uh, event two months ago. Um, well, just that's, that's it, sorry. Um, before talking about implementing actual LDAP into Kubernetes, we're first going to talk about Kubernetes access control. So obviously the access control is managed by the API server. As you can see, the API server is the central part of the entire Kubernetes uh, system. So every this, like the, the, the proxy, the scheduler, your kubectl also talks to the uh, API server. And then obviously the uh, yeah, access control is divided into two stages, which is the authentication and the authorization, which makes a lot of sense. So we start with the authentication. So Kubernetes uh, authentication is based on users, just not in the way that you usually think of users. So you have two types of users, which is the first uh, is the service account, and then the second is a normal user. So what does a normal user actually mean? In Kubernetes, it means a basic string. So actually, your username is just Jordi, for example, and that's it. Uh, Basically, your normal users have to be managed outside of Kubernetes in an independent service. And this can be a lot of different things. It's uh, also pluggable, so it's plugins for Kubernetes. A couple example ones are static password files, uh, open ID, uh, there's also X509 certificates, and webhook. So I've also uh, heard a lot about uh, like Google Container Engine. If you've ever wondered why their um, like access control works with Kubernetes, it's because of webhooks. They don't have any uh, plugin for their system. So usually when you log in to Kubernetes, you have to set credentials on the config uh, yeah, functions of kubectl. And it looks like this. So you basically say minus minus username Jordi and password is cat123. Uh, and basically it creates a cube config file in your home directory. And as you can see, uh, it's plain text, which I hate. This is really bad, I think. Uh, then there's an another option, which is the token one. And it basically stores your token in the file. It's a bit better, but uh, as a system like administrator, how are you going to give out these tokens to your users? It's a, kind of a long process, and logging in just becomes very hard. So uh, what we wanted to do is we want to make logging in to Kubernetes easy. And, and we yeah. currently use LDAP, unfortunately, in our system. But uh, what we did is we made the access control in three stages. So we built another uh, tool, which is called kubelogin. It's basically a small Python uh, yeah, command line tool that asks for username and password. And then we use the Kubernetes authentication authorization webhooks to uh, talk with our independent LDAP service built in Node.js. And this runs inside Kubernetes as well. So basically, the Node.js uh, service uh, has three endpoints which the uh, cube login authentication and authorization webhook talk to, which are these, these three uh, endpoints, so it's login, off, and offset, which makes a lot of sense. And we're going to talk about every single one. So the first one is obviously the login endpoint. And as you can see, a simple curl request with some uh, JSON payload, username, password to a uh, LDAP service login URL, obviously HTTPS. Um, oh yeah, and. Uh, Basically, if you fail, you get an error. So it has invalid credentials or like some LDAP server down or anything else. If it succeeds, you get a webhook token. And this webhook token is a JSON web <coughs> token. So there's a couple reasons why we use this. First of all, uh, Kubernetes service accounts use this themselves. And most importantly, it has signature verification, which is critical for us, uh, because obviously you don't want someone forging your token and just logging into uh, your Kubernetes as cube system or anything that's uh, kind of bad. Token expiration, obviously, the like automatic expir expiration of your tokens is really nice to have, and it doesn't require a database, so that's also nice. So the code is maybe a little bit small, but it's not very important anyway. The login endpoint basically takes the username and password and it logs into LDAP using the LDAP bind service. It's a very uh, yeah, standard, you can look it up anywhere. Once this succeeds, it will sign a JSON web token with as the data just your username. That's it, nothing else. The most important part of this, of this is that it signs your JSON web token with a secret. So uh, this could be like a master root password. 
and it uses an algorithm to do this, so it's uh, HS256, which is the default on uh, JSON Web Token. And this is also critical, which we'll get back to at a later point. So now our cube login looks like this. Basically, you have your uh, command line, say cube login, it says uh, login to Kubernetes. You type in your username, type in your password, and you get a file that looks like this. So it's uh, like a longer token. It's split up in three sections, as you can see with the dot. It's just a JSON web token format. The f uh, everything before the first dot is basically saying that it's an, a J JWT token with, which, uh, like with an algorithm. The second part is the payload, which is our username, and just basically for it encoded again. And then the last part is the signature, uh, which is the HS265, 256, sorry, uh, number. Then we have the first part down, so logging in is now a lot easier. Now we have tokens, but the Kubernetes uh, authentication doesn't do anything with it. So now we implement the authentication webhook by configuring it in the API server. This can be done through, uh, well, there's two, there's two options. One is optional. Uh, the cache one is optional. We don't have to explain what the cache is, I suppose. And then there's the webhook config file, which looks like this. It's actually quite for both. It looks really bad, but uh, it's basically some SSL setup for the uh, HTTPS uh, yeah, communication with the LDAP service. And the most important part is the, obviously the server URL, which is again the LDAP service and the off end endpoint. So once you've configured this in your API server and you've logged in, it will start sending the following uh, JSON payloads to the web service, which is basically just uh, asking a token review of your webhook token that's in your uh, cube config file. Right, and then you know, this is the longest piece of code that I have, but it's again not really important. What happens is it validates your request, so it's uh, actually making sure that it's a Kubernetes request and it has a valid token in it. And then it's going to verify this token. So JSON web token, this library that we're using, we basically take out the token from the response and we uh, verify it with the signature again. So really important. And if you can't read it, I'm sorry, but at the end, the last parameter of the verification is the algorithm we used to originally sign this token. If you do not supply this argument, you might as well just turn off security in, like, totally because it's a very broken algorithm, actually. Because if you use none, uh, you, can, you can do easy token uh, forgery for JSON web tokens if you use none as an algorithm. It will basically always verify. It's in the standard, I don't know why it's really bad. If your library doesn't support this, drop it immediately. Um, either way, we do it correctly, and we take out the username from the data we've originally signed. We go to LDAP again, and we ask it, does this user exist? And what groups is this uh, user a part of? Uh, if this succeeds again, we send in a JSON uh, response back to the server saying, okay, we are authenticated, we are user majority with groups a, B, C, and uh, like obviously if we, not, we don't exist or don't have any groups, we fail and we uh, fall back and get an error from kubectl or whatever system you're using. So that's now two out of three down. And the next step obviously is authorization. And again, it's two settings in the API server. The first one being the authorization web config file again. And then there's the authorization mode. And there's also a bunch of plugins for this, and we use, use again Webhook uh, for this. Configuration files are exactly the same, except we just like, replace off and for offset, that's it. So you've logged in, you have a token, you've authorized, you've sent back to Kubernetes, like, hey, we are authenticated. Sorry, we are authenticated and authorized. And after which, if you send the request saying, I want to get a list of pods, I want to create a pod, I want to do anything at all, it's going to ask uh, this request, or send this request, which is a subject access review. And I split it up in two parts. I cut out some the JSON payload because it was a bit long, but these are the most important uh, values of it. So the reach attributes on the right, this is what you requested. So obviously you can tell, like you can tell that I need a kubectl get pods of the namespace web production. 
And you can also see that my username is Jordi on the left, and I am part of the following groups of system authenticator. This is the one you get from Kubernetes as soon as you authenticate it successfully. And the KAS web production one is web specific, like specified in our LDAP uh, service. So, like the beauty of having webhooks as an authentication and authorization method is that you can do basically whatever you want. Uh, this is our method. So we have uh, two uh, checks you can pass, basically. The first one is a whitelisted user list. And these are to cover the service accounts. So the service accounts have a specific format, like the system, like semicolon, like service accounts, semicolon, something, something like that. If it's prefixed with this, we just, you can do whatever you want. In the namespace you're assigned to, I know it. Uh, the Qubit master user, obviously, like if you don't allow this user, uh, well, the system is not going to boot at all, which is uh, yeah, annoying. So make sure that the Qubit master user that you've specified in your Qubit config is not like logged, like you cannot log into it on LDAP because some, otherwise you'll have just master someone unintentionally. Then the second check we do is we have the group. The groups in LDAP which translate to namespaces in Kubernetes. So we've done K8 like uh, web production gives you full access to the namespace web production, and then we have a second uh, one which has just RO attached in the end, which is read-only uh, namespace uh, web production. So that means that you cannot like delete or create anything, obviously. Um, so. Once you've made sure that your user is off, like authorized, you can send in the following request, uh, like sorry, the following response, and uh, just basically saying status allowed of true or false. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it actually. That's, if, if you pass all these steps, uh, basically you've, you're done. So we're gonna look at some success examples. This one isn't a success example, it's the one I showed earlier. So we're asking for pods in web production. We are part of the k 8 web production group. So obviously this one succeeds. This is a failure example, like we're creating a pod in web production while we're read-only group uh, whitelisted. So that fails obviously. And then there's the cube system one. We are not part of cube system at all. So this also fails. Uh, what a failure looks like on the uh, yeah, command line is as follows. So basically you ask for get pods, it says, Server does not allow access to requested resource, get pods, fails, and that's the end of it. Um, if you want to read more about webhooks and uh, specifically also about the JSON web token authentication I talked about, attacking it more specifically, make sure to read this because if you implement JSON web tokens incorrectly, your system might as well just be open. That's really bad. Um, I'm not sure if we have any time for questions. I'm pretty sure we don't, but. <laughs> yeah, we don't, so you can reach out to me here. I'm always in the Kubernetes Slack channel, the official one, kubernetes.slack.com. You can always ask me anything. Uh, so, yeah, thank you.